now. So if you're watching on YouTube, you missed how we got this phrase that we're going to test and see. Does it exist? Hippos got a handbook on the freight car chocolate rubber. What is that? Wait, hold on. Hippos got a handbook on the freight car chocolate rubber chafes, the aluminum shaft to completion, defenestration of the calibration of the salivation worms tucked and my mother's pet brine pig nose. I'm going to copy this in the in the chat here. For the, you should just put, make a Facebook post with that. Uh, I, well, I, I yeah. put it in the Liberty. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do that too. Actually, I'm, even better than that, you should make it a Facebook post, but on top of it, put that uh, face mask thing that everybody's using now, the encryption thing, and see if people try to actually encrypt it and figure out what it is. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Wait, how do you do that? Give me, give me I, that. I haven't actually. I know a couple of the guys in the crypto groups are oh, using it. Oh, never mind. It. Never um, mind. I'm just posting it. Okay, I just posted it. We'll see later. Okay. We'll check on later in the show and see if anybody they're going to try like, heart. I want to see if I get any heart <laughs> reactions for it. Beautiful poetry, dude. Beautiful. Okay, so now the bet is, if you're watching on uh, on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, you can participate. If you win, you get Jeremy's flag. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you can get a flag. I have more. You can't have that flag. The Spookbuster flag, okay. I'm sorry. All right. If we, if we want to do that, I mean, I have an ANCAP flag we can give away. Oh, uh, you're giving away should... the ANCAP I, flag. That's, uh, that's the first one to go. Um, the, the Bitcoin flag that I have would yeah. probably be – I have a Bitcoin flag if anybody's interested. That's nice. uh, hey, you, like should burn, you should I burn the ANCAP flag. flag. You know what? I've actually considered doing that. Hey, oh, it's only hey, because I'm done I with have you now, Bill. Let's say, say oh. goodbye to the Bye, Bill. We're done with you. Bye, Bill. Uh, Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have considered doing it. a video with the ANCAP flag only because I did do the uh, the American flag burning video a few years ago where I burned three three flags that I had, including my, my including my three per flag. Okay. Um, now now the bet is when I press search, is this going to come up? And we're looking on. The library of babble.info. It will search for up to 3,500 characters, and it has created a... a Bodhi, can you explain what this is? Um, it's basically a... If you sat a monkey down at a typewriter, it would eventually type everything everyone has ever, ever thought of or could ever think of and write. This is that monkey. This is that monkey on digital, steroids. Except it's a digital monkey. And what's what's yeah. really cool about this, we're going to be talking about cynicism today. I'm going to get the digital monkey off your back. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, oh, but now that's a show title. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. I couldn't have perceived that. Uh, and I should have. Uh, if uh, We're going to be talking about cynicism, and we're going to be talking about stoicism through two dudes, Diogenes and uh, Epictetus. Uh, Epictetus, mm -hmm. Epictetus, I've heard it pronounced both ways. And uh, what do you have, Jeremy? What's your pronunciation? I said I, said I, I prefer the ep Epictetus, probably because some... Epictetus, probably, it is. Pro okay, great. Well, well, probably because subconsciously it sounds... I, I hear teat, and then I think of titty, and then I giggle, so that's yeah. probably why I... Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Actually, now I'm sold. It's Epictetus. <laughs> now it makes sense. It's easier to remember, too. Very easy to remember. Okay, so... Uh, and, and both of those philosophies actually have contained in them a certain amount. Well, I guess some of the uh, – so I'm not sure, so sure about cynicism, but I believe it's the case. But definitely with uh, um, uh, stoicism, they're deterministic philosophies. Uh, very, and so stoic, this – Very much so. Yeah, so this goes to that – although I'm, I'm in the stoic camp, but I'm not a determinist. But anyway, this goes into that whole deterministic thing because if I press this button and a monkey type this – yeah, let's see. Let's see. And let's find out. we've got an exact match. We've got an exact match from wow. the title. The title of the piece is uh, XRBSVJSUJ.WVSSKHY. That's the title yep. of the epic piece, and this is page 404. Location. There it is. Hippo's got a fan book. On the freight car, chocolate rubber chafes the aluminum shaft to completion, defenestration of the calibration of the salivation worms tucked in my mother's pet brine pig nose. I mean, that, I'm that sorry. Is, that is spectacular. It's freaking beautiful. Although, 
a, a question just arose to me, and this may be a stupid are you, question. Are you gonna are you gonna pee on my parade? No, no. I was just curious, and I don't know why I didn't. This didn't. I didn't think of this the first time that you brought this Library of Babel to our. Was that right? Library of Babel to our to our yeah. attention. Yeah, Bodhi. Uh, was. was is this just taking the words you put in now and entering them somewhere in there so they can be found? No. Okay. I, I, you can actually. You can actually. If you take the exact title, match, whatever, you can actually send that to someone and they can go read it. Interesting. Well, like I said, it might be a stupid question. I was just it was, it just crossed my mind. I'm like, wait a minute, are we being played here? But either it's, it's, it's still pretty cool. Cool question. I, I had that question myself, and I'm going to still allow for the possibility that that's true, but it I kind of think it's probably not. But because uh, it actually does make sense that they'd be able to do this if if they can. Figure it's out not going to take. It's not going. It doesn't take an extreme amount of data either. Yeah, it's true, 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 true. Yeah, so I, I'm 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 of a mind. So so in that deterministic theme, now we are ready. We're ready for the official opening of the show, and that's why we're still on the title page, folks. If you're watching my version of the show, if you're watching Bodie's version of the show, it's just a bunch of dudes slapped together in some sort of haphazard, crazy way. What is the background yeah. you got going on there in D Live? Uh, it's pretty much uh, Jeremy's background because we have green screens. Oh, Sweet. so you? Oh, I see. So you put. Oh, uh, we're in all. We're all sitting with you, Jeremy, right now. Nice. Yeah. As please. it should be. Please don't. Except, put it that does, does that mean somebody's blocking the spoot the, the the Ghostbuster symbol? That can't be good. Yeah, that's Paul. <laughs> Damn it, Paul. I am done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a spook blocker. I don't want to be a spook blocker, dude. Spook blocker. I, I'm not a spook blocker. I like the spook to come out so you can see them and pick them apart. So the spooks I come out at night. So the, 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 the spooks this come is out the, at night. This is the first official. It's not really the first official show, but it's the first official show that has the new title, Lozilla Mystery Theater. And I'm really yeah. excited to see the design that you're going to come up with, Bodhi, because you're going to yeah. be d redesigning the look. Right now, I just use the old Lozilla yeah. logo, but that's changing. It's still going to be Bodhi and I, and we're going to have guests on sometimes. Like in this case, we have Mr. Jeremy Hengelolo. Lo he's more than he's more than a guest. Come on, technically Everybody's... I am part of the original Lozilla team. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> you know we, we should a lot of we people. should take a turn getting all of the original Lozilla hosts on here. Well, yeah, you got to get James because like I, I said, he's James... gonna, he, he be he be mad. I talked to him, he be mad. Yeah, can't, we got to get James Weeks <laughs> on. Dylan, uh, who? Niz. Oh, uh, Niz. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot this was in the in there with us originally. Yeah, Mr. yeah, there was Moto. I think, I think there was, was at least it. one other person. I thought I think there was, was at least six. one other. Oh, maybe. I think it was... Who who else was it? It was James, James, me, Bodie, Jeremy, Dylan, and Niz. That's six. That's six. it. Yeah, that, the, oh. the 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 Fab Six. So this show is titled "The Man from God Who Acted Like a Dog," and even though we're going to talk about both. Diogenes and Epictetus, uh, I, I chose the title of Diogenes for the show because, I mean, come on. That's a great freaking title, isn't it? Right? Mm -hmm. It's a good title. Man from God who acted like a dog. So we didn't really talk about how we're going to do the show, so we're just going to no, dive in. And I have show notes here. So I thought we spent that more time prepping for that weird intro than we did the actual show itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that exactly. weird intro is awesome. Are you kidding uh... me? Yeah, I, I have a full disclosure. I I haven't really studied anything, so I'm just kind of so you're going to just have to to bounce off. So so Jeremy, uh, yes. I knew about Diogenes like sort of like not really clearly, but sort of. I knew that he was a cynic philosopher, and I knew that he was. I I I I would have just called him a, an aesthetic, an a ascetic, ascetic, not aesthetic, ascetic. Uh, I didn't really know much about him, and at the time that I learned about him, I was a total Sadie Von State face, and uh, I was all more concerned about uh, postmodern poetry than I was philosophy. So while I studied him in As college— As you should have been. I mean, right. On. right. Wait, were, were you afraid of the cultural Marxists? Is that— I, I was probably one of them and didn't know it. Wow. <laughs> I was advancing the cause, you know. Actually, wait. Is Diogenes the first cultural Marxist, even before Marx? You know. Ooh, mind blow. <laughs> so, so let me let me start with you, Jeremy. Um, yes. Paul. Tell us a little bit about Diogenes, what you remember. And well, uh, 
I, I think you and I have talked about this previously. I knew like the very, very basics of Diogenes, like the name and that he was attached to some of these, like the like the cynicism and stuff like that's all I really knew. It wasn't until you shared a video with us uh, last year sometime, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that uh, that I that I first became even more aware from like, oh, this guy's really interesting. Yeah. And then I wanted to look into him more. And then I ended up uh, getting stuck with other things I was doing. But then when we were t- talking about doing the show, I, I looked, I looked at some of the other stuff you sent, and I mean, the guy—he's a fascinating dude. I mean, that's that's definitely the first word that comes to mind. <laughs> fascinating. He's, he's basically G.G. Allen of ancient yes. Greece. Yes, actually, that's that's an <gasps> that excellent. That is so interesting that you said that because I, I was am... going, yeah, I was thinking that that's an excellent comparison. Actually, <laughs> that's a great comparison. I don't want to. Okay, G.G. Uh, Allen was a kind of a punk rock performer dude that. Uh, you know, he defecated and threw it at the audience. He performed naked and he cut himself. And he was, he yeah, yeah, definitely a Diogenes. What's interesting about that is I actually, I had messaged Michael Thien and I had said that I wanted to send him the show because I thought he'd be interested in this. Because Michael Thien to me is kind of a Diogenes type person. And Bodie, you're definitely a Diogenes type person as well. It, but you sitting at, by, you, by that, you mean sitting in his tub in uh, Wyoming and throwing feces, feces at everybody <laughs> right. on the internet? <laughs> right. Yes. I love it's you, like, Michael. <laughs> I don't understand that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just playing. I couldn't resist right. that one. No. <laughs> but, but I thought he'd be interested in 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 the show about Diogenes because uh, he's kind of a, a Diogenes character. But he also seems to be attracted to diogenes type people and i specifically said gg allen <laughs> oh yeah because when you, when you when you think about although throwing, i spelled it wrong if you think about throwing fecal matter or, and or urinating on people uh, and doing st- all sorts of stuff like that i mean in the modern yeah. day yeah your mind will tend to turn to gg allen if you have go there any, right away if you know anything about uh, the punk scene whatsoever he's <laughs> likely you know that name so yeah it's uh it's it's definitely easy to see the connection there but anyway yeah so Basically, the guy lived, uh, well, at least a, a decent portion of his life, he lived out of an actual tub in the, uh, in the, in well, the Agora in, it was, in Athens, right? It was a... Uh, like a wooden tub, like a, it was a round a, barrel thingy. <laughs> it, it was a clay wine jar. Oh, okay. I thought it was, I thought it was a wooden one for some reason. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That, that's what they say. It's a clay wine jar. Now, there's some variations there. One of the variations is it's a tub. One of the variations is it's a barrel. So there are some variations there. Oh, but, that's why. But but he yeah. lived out of out of something along that line. Yeah. Let's just say a tub because that's more visual. I'm yeah, gonna go with he, that. I can't. Yeah. Quite I kind of see him. I kind of see him popping jar. out of a wine pot and like scaring people. Like <laughs> have, have a little jar, say donations, and they jump in. And he just grabs it. And... That magic pot dude from the Final Fantasy series who just his head goes up and he's like, "Feed me, give me something." <laughs> More nerd yeah. <laughs> references. Sorry, sorry, folks. But, I don't do mer- nerd references. It's not my thing, nerd. man. It's not my thing. Uh, yeah. he, he basically did. He basically did whatever he felt at the time, and uh, I mean, he 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 seemed at least the the. I guess the interpretations of what happened because you can't we can't know for sure because as you explained with what he what he was living in, there's so many different stories. You yeah. kind of got to piece together what actually happened we're talking about you know thousand how many thousands a thousand plus two thousand years ago what is two thousand he was born in four tw- and i'm looking at my my cheat sheet here so i don't want you to think i have this memorized in my head he was born in 412 bc or thereabouts near about they're not quite sure when he was born but he died 323 bc and they know that or they think they know that because the legend goes and how so- did he get younger Oh gosh! <laughs> You're, you know, for a moment there, I, I you you had me. You played me, dude. You totally played me because I was about ready to lose it and get all knowledge righteous on you. What do you mean? Don't you understand BC? I guess now they say I, BCE, I, but whatever. Yeah, that's what I was gonna harp on next. Sorry, yeah, go yeah. ahead. I I stick with BC because I grew up with that, and I like me before too. Christ instead of before I Dominaris. do too. Fight me, so. Yeah. Uh, Actually, it's not a hill I'll die on. Uh, but he was. But the reason that when he died is so important, which we're going to get to in a little bit here. Uh, he died, allegedly, allegedly, on the same day that Alexander the Great died. Yeah. Just take. Do that you in. think that? Do you think they're the same person? No, no. They're like, well, they're 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 kind of like uh, the you know. On the 
They're like two <laughs> extreme examples of two men that live their lives with with total take charge. I do what I want. And they went to completely different places. But where Alexander went, he went to places that actually he took charge. But he took charge in such a way that what he took charge doing ended up owning him and ended up destroying him. And he dies young. Whereas Yeah, he was, only, what, 30, he was only, what, 36, 36 or something? 39? 36, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah, 36 years old. And uh, so so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to briefly go through and interrupt me whenever you want. Okay. And if you have okay. other anecdotes you want to add or you want to comment, please do. So he's the name Diogenes means the man from God, and he's a cynic. And cynic, roughly translated, it means dog. And the cynics took on the name cynic because in Greek times, in ancient Greek times, the dog was not a very revered animal because it was so, it's so gauche. It just does what it wants. It, well, it, if you've ever been to Athens, like there's wild dogs that run everywhere. Sometimes you feed them, sometimes you don't. But the, the actual city takes care of them now. So I wonder yeah. if that has anything to do with a reverence for Diogenes. I don't know. I, hmm. That's an interesting question. I don't know. But but yeah, he the the some of the biggest some of the more notorious stories come from Athens. But but the most notorious story actually comes from Corinth. So he's uh, he's called the 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 man from dog God who acted like a dog. And as Bodhi pointed out, God backwards his dog uh, in the in the pre-show, uh, and and yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've made riffs on that long 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 and good and hard throughout my throughout my twenties. Like you're still in your twenties, young man. It's cute. Um, so, almost, <laughs> almost, I'm barely. Almost. But he he starts off with an interesting beginning where he pops up in history. His dad actually was a coin minter. He minted coins for the city state. And he was accused at some point of doing bad things with his coins. Of what? What do you call it? You know, defacing the value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defacing the value. They weren't. They were. They were. They were slightly inauthentic. And so Diogenes goes to the an oracle. Wait, debasing he, the currency, right? Debasing. The, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Was, was he drawing dicks on the currency? Not yet. Okay. He he didn't quite reach his Bodhi stage yet. <laughs> All right. So so he Diogenes goes, might have, but not his dad though. <laughs> no, no, Diog- well, no, not his dad. Definitely not his dad, but Diogenes. So he goes to an oracle, and the oracle tells him, deface the coins. Now, what's really cool about this is there is actually archaeological entry. I can't remember his dad's name. It begins with an H. I don't, I don't really care. Uh, but uh, they, found the arche- they found the coins that were defaced. This, this Harati, whatever guy's name. What'd you say, Bodhi? You get the name? Heraclitus or something? No, Her- not Heraclitus. That's a... That's a philosopher. Else. Herodotus. <laughs> that's a that's a hippopotamus. Historian. That's a. That's a <laughs> I don't know. I was gonna say that's my <laughs> girlfriend, but I'm married. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's, that's an animal that Paul doesn't know how to spell, as we established earlier so, tonight. Right. <laughs> well, hippo. H i p p o. There you go. So, so do we know what Start oracle right. this was? Was this, was this the oracle of Delphi? Or? I don't think it was the oracle of Delphi. Is this I, the one okay. from the first matrix, matrix or the second matrix? This is the second, <laughs> second, second matrix. Second, second. They switched them up in the second one, right? It was a different oracle? So, so then he, he comes to a different understanding. He doesn't believe that the oracle meant to defend, deface the currency, like the coins. He came to believe that what the oracle told him to do was to deface the currency as in... The social veneer, the mores, the customs, the right. traditions. Everything. Yeah. Everything. To so deface he, everything. To literally, so yeah, to literally take a crap on everything he could find. That's that's the interpretation <laughs> he took and ran yeah. with. Right. And so hence he, the earlier references to Gigi Allen. <laughs> he's he's the father of cryptocurrency. Okay. I'm I don't see the connection, but I bet you there is one, but I'm too dumb to draw it because I'm slow. <laughs> I apologize. I, can, I, I, I have a better vocabulary than you, but I'm not Fine. as smart as you. So, I'm not smart. Well, I'm dumb, so I'm <laughs> compared to me. <laughs> yes. So so he, he arrives in Athens, uh, and when he arrives in Athens, he has his slave I'd just Manes. like to point out for a second that we're having a conversation about debasing currency and stuff like that, and the two of you just took the opportunity to... Uh, debase each other? Or to, to debase, no, debase <laughs> yourselves to each other and try to like outdo each other. Well, I'm, I'm dumber yeah. than you, man. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way you do it. So he arrives, and he's got a slave Manes with him, uh, and uh, his slave abandons him. 
And then he says, well, if Manes can live without Diogenes, Diogenes can live without Manes. And that's when he starts this idea of this is, well, we'll get to this, I guess. But this is the idea the cynics had, which the Stoics definitely picked up on, which is don't form deep uh, attachments to people because then they own you. And you don't want to let people own you. It's not It's yeah. not the path to self-awareness, I'll just say. Yeah. Attachment yeah. is the root of all suffering. Yes. Well, yeah. uh, and they're, they're actually not against suffering. Suffering is fine. No, they um, love it. They, yeah, it. absolutely. It's, it's a path to self-awareness, actually, to, to, to lean into discomfort, to seek it out even. Mm -hmm. So um, there's the, well, the, the one thing I do want to point out really quickly is because I, I, didn't, I didn't realize this until I started going, re-going over the information that you, that you sent our way to, to talk about this, was like – because uh, as we'll get to with Epictetus later on, uh, where he where Epictetus started in his life versus where Diogenes started his life, because he showed up there with a slave of his own. Oh, he came from privilege. That's what I'm saying. Like, so like this, like th this to me, this just made the story that much more interesting to think that like where he came from to where he ended up. Because if you hear the story of where he ended up, I mean, yeah, it's fascinating. And he's an he's an extremely interesting and weird character. But to to add this to it too, it's like whoa, man! Like the like it's not, it wasn't a fall from grace. It was a chosen uh, it was a chosen path where he was just like ah, well, I don't need this crap. It yeah, was it's... kind of a fall from grace though too. It was well, it's fall for his it's... father, not for him though, right? No, yeah, yeah, for him too. They were both. He he was chased out of Sinope. He was stripped of his citizenship oh. and exiled. So oh, I didn't catch that. I yeah. thought it was just. Oh no, I didn't. Guy. I didn't have okay. that in my notes. But, no, but uh, I was talking about other stuff that I, other stuff that I, I read up and, and watched on him. I, I thought it, I, for some reason I thought it was just his father who was uh, punished essentially for no, that. No, no, it was both of them. They oh, okay. were both blamed, and uh, he went out and uh, and he went to Athens with his slave, and then his slave abandoned him, and that's hmm. really where his real journey begins. And uh, so, so some of the things that happened in Athens, real quick, uh, just some of the anecdotes. Uh, so he had a simple bowl for eating. That's all he had. That was his possession and, and his tub. And uh, so it's his tub and his bowl. And he saw a little boy that was eating from his hands. And he's like, well, I'm not going to be outdone by that. Threw away his bowl. Oh, I, I, I clearly don't need it. Yeah, because I've heard different variations of that story, too. Some, yeah. some, one of them where he was where the boy was drinking water from his hands. But the yeah, same idea. Yeah, right, he looked, right, he yeah. basically looked at it and was like, well, if he can do that, why the hell do I need this stupid bowl? Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, it's that, essentially just another thing I got to carry around and make sure I know where it is all the time. Screw that, man. I don't even need this thing. That dude just out debased me. I am not going to take <laughs> that. <laughs> you know, you know, you really think about it. It's think, like it's, I think Diogenes was the original minimalist, too. Oh, Probably. oh my God! He was, <laughs> he was absolutely a minimalist, uh, but he was a beggar. Uh, he bit people. He barked at people. Uh, uh, a man once approached him, and now again, there's all variations of these stories. So I think I met it, this like, guy. <laughs> I think that guy is living deep inside you, and yeah, uh, you have. No, I swear, you... I passed him. I passed him on like 14th Street once. <laughs> okay. I was gonna. I was gonna say. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of guys. So just that <laughs> that description you just gave, there's a whole bunch of them that fit that description. I've run into in Penn Station over the years. Yeah. So like, <laughs> right. The bite, barking, urinating, yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but he has a purpose to what he's doing. Most of the well, I don't know. Maybe these people do. I don't want to assume. Maybe they do. Uh, but uh, I think they do. A dude approached him and said, "Listen, you know, if you if you could say, I don't know, if it's like say something amazing, give me an advice, or convince me. Maybe that's what it was. Convince me to give you money." And uh, Diogenes says, uh, um, uh, "Go hang yourself." So <laughs> that was his response, and it was like, <laughs> I, I I think that it was something along the lines of, "If I haven't amazed you so far, I never am." So uh, screw you. So he knew Plato, and he did not like Plato. And that's good because I don't like Plato. Yeah. Plato yeah. is a authoritarian the cave thing. Jerk he's definitely, uh, you know, the allegory of the cave. I could dig that. Oh but, yeah. Uh, the rest, yeah. The rest. You go of, into you start throwing into the Republic and the yeah, philosopher when I, when king. I, and dude, when I read the Republic for the first time, I was like, holy crap! What an authoritarian piece of shit this guy was. I had no right. clue. <laughs> oh no, no, no. He's like, uh, you know, he he out he. Well, I won't say. Never mind. I was gonna say he he out Spartans the Spartans, but man, now the Spartans were some scary dudes. Really scary. Really. I mean, really. Yeah. The Spartans, 
Oh, well, that's not, I'm not going to get off on that tangent, but I'll just uh, say. Well, because Plato was in the theoretical, and the Spartans, they were in the uh, reality actually doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, they were in reality actually doing it. And, you know, it's interesting. That's what, what, what you said there. Plato was in the theoretical, and that's one of the biggest reasons why Diogenes couldn't stand him. He, he considered him airy, fairy, gossamer-winged. Uh, Googly Gook. And... Basically, just talking shit in the corner, and people listen to him. And he's like, yeah. "Well, I could do that. I, I could literally talk and throw shit in the corner." <laughs> so, so at one point, Plato's Academy they decide that they're going to define a human being as a featherless biped. Now, at the time, they didn't know that there were bipeds that existed uh, because they didn't have them there that were also featherless. Like kangaroos so, and stuff like that. Uh... Yeah, they didn't know that. They didn't know that. So Diogenes plucked a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> took the chicken to the academy and says, hey, look, a man. So look, I changed, found a man. <laughs> so they changed their definition to a featherless uh, biped with broad fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, you're telling, me, you're telling me they didn't know about monkeys? Uh, Apparently I not. I don't, I, I don't I, know. I, I had heard, you know, I I had heard I'd the heard, story I, about the chicken, uh, about, and I and actually not the chicken. I had heard the story of Plato and you know his def the, the definition of man, like the whole, bi, you know, oh, the biped featherless thing. biped. Yeah, the I actually heard, I that heard that before. before. I didn't know about Diogenes. I know about yeah, his too, definition. Me too. Yeah. But I but I had, I just it just I just assumed. Yeah, okay, they're in Rome. At that point, where are monkeys mostly? Probably still in Africa. They haven't been shifted off. The primates haven't been shifted off to all the or, other. Or countries. China, you they're, got the. They're not in Rome. Stuff. They're not in Rome. You sure? They're not wrong. I mean, they're in the Italy area. Uh, no, the they're Greece not. And, uh, they're in Greece. They're in Greece. They're in Greece. Yeah, the whole area, the Mediterranean. They're in the Mediterranean. They're not in. They're not in Africa. They're not where all the monkeys yeah, are. They're, so they're, 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 they're in see. Greece, no. and I don't know how much uh, a lot of folks would have had interaction with with the Silk Road at that point, Bodhi. This is about uh, probably about like three fifty BC, somewhere around there. So I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. Uh, uh, he uh, he also with the Plato's Academy, they're debating whether motion existed or not. That's a thing that they were debating. Uh, <laughs> and Diogenes, he just stood up and walked out. Motion exists. <laughs> <laughs> now, he wasn't making a philosophical, you know, theological or theoretical statement. He's, he's basically what he's saying there is I ain't got time for that. If 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 it's not useful to me in the blood and bones right in front of me, I I just don't care. I I'm looking for the application. This is actually one of my great appeals to the cynics, especially the cynics and even the Stoics. Is the cynics and the Stoics, unlike a lot of the other schools of philosophy, they were much more about action. They they wanted yes. to see things demonstrated, not talked about, and and that's a, a great appeal to me. So uh, I'll, I'll skip through a couple of these things here. So he carried a lamp in which various stories are either he said he's looking for a man. Uh, oh, we got a little note note here. What's the what's the uh, you said it in Skype. I'm not clicking on that chat. OK, the, the Silk Road derives its name from the lucrative trade and silk carried along its length beginning in the Han Dynasty 207 BCE to 220 CE. Ah, So it's it's after yeah, it's, so it's it's so it's is. actually it's pretty close. It's close, but they it's, still like it's more than it's 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 it, more than a hundred years after Diogenes. And 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 if anybody the maybe beginning. maybe a handful of people had made that trek at that time, if anybody made it earlier. So yeah. you know the ch the chances of somebody like Plato with his arrogance and just kind of be like, well, this is what we're going to declare it because you know he, you know he was the he was Mister you know Airy Fairy as uh, Diogenes. Put Airy it. Fairy authoritary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know that that. that, that which I'm is my find. favorite part of the story, just the fact that he just walked, the, you know, whether it's true or not, whether it's completely true or not, yeah. just the, the whole, yeah, the whole idea of him it. just walking in, just being like, yep, uh, you're in it. And, and not even say, basically not even just going, like you said, not trying to make a philosophical point, just walking in and going, you're an idiot. This is what, this is what you describe, you moron. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's yes, exactly. To, yes. To Plato yeah. and his, and his, that and would be disciples. something that Bodhi would do. Would you, yeah. would you grant that, Jeremy? Would that be a Bodhi move? I would I would see it as I I'd see it as my uh, I would pull myself <laughs> too yeah. but, but Bodhi more so <laughs> yeah that, that's more to me that would be more of a Bodhi move so he has this lamp that he's carrying around in various stories he says I'm looking for a man I'm looking for a good man I'm looking for an honest man and he keeps carrying the lamp because he never finds a man yeah. 
And I, I yeah, like this- the idea of an honest man. And to me, an honest man isn't like somebody who is going to tell you the truth as far as they know it. To me, an honest man is someone that recognizes that they know nothing and they're okay with that. And they don't take absolutarian positions. Not saying you don't take positions of, you know, you have your standards and principles that you go by that you find useful. But, uh, uh, yeah, an honest man to me is someone that's willing to face the limitations of their own understanding. And maybe that's what he's yeah. looking for. I don't know. I'd like to think that's what it was. But, uh, of course, it might. none of this might be true. Whether it's true or not, his I'm life... Really, I'm not realizing Diogenes was also the original troll. Um, oh, okay. this, oh, this guy totally. wore a hell of a lot of hats, man. You got you to tip your hat to this, to this mofo. This, he was great. This, <laughs> this guy is like the father of memes. Sir, he, he really yeah. is. And he, he was dank. He was a dank memer at that. So he gets he gets uh, captured. Uh, uh, he's on a voyage, and pirates capture him, and they sell him into slavery. And, Wasn't that because uh, he finally just decided to leave the marketplace after being there for a while? He's just like, oh, no, I'll get up and, and go around. I don't, he, had stayed I don't the, know. he stayed there for a while. At least the stories seem to tell that he, like, he, after he originally, you know, after his slave ditched him and then he just decided to hang out in the marketplace in his tub or whatever it was, barrel, you know, whatever we're calling it. Uh, eventually he was just like, all right, now I'm going to move on and do some other things. Just, you know, in, in his way, just got up and moved on and then managed to get himself captured. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, continue. So he gets <laughs> captured and he's he's being sold as a slave. And he says, uh, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for someone that is looking for a master. And he listed as his only occupation for the people selling slaves, <laughs> uh, I govern men. <laughs> now, there's a double meaning to that. There's, a, there's a, uh, a, a phrase that sounds like that, which also means I teach values to people. So he was taken to Corinth by a wealthy trader. Uh, and he took him into his household where he taught the children. He was in the household for some period of time. Don't know how long. But at some point, he ends up back in the tub. <laughs> yeah, he goes back. <laughs> at some point, he ends up back in the tub. And then we get to Alexander the Great. So Alexander the Great, this is before he's the Great. This is a lot of part of the story that people miss miss out on. And to me, this 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 there's just so whether this story if this story isn't true, it's a beautiful parable. And and there's so much meaning that you can call out of this whole exchange. So you have here Alexander, take charge kind of guy. He's not quite uh, great. He's not great yet. He had just <laughs> become the king and he's a little you know, he's he's securing his realm in the Peloponnesian Peninsula, the Peloponnesian whatever however you say that. Uh, and uh, he's throwing a party in Corinth, and he's about ready. This is when he's about ready to head out and go and conquer the world. And mm-hmm. so it's, this is a pretty critical moment in his life. And he wants Diogenes to be at this party. And Diogenes, of course, he doesn't show up. So Alexander goes to seek him. And there's various stories of the account between the two, which I think is really, really cool. Um, the, the, the one that I like the most is, uh, Alexander approaches him and says, dude, yeah, you're great. I love you, man. You're super, you're awesome. Whatever you need, whatever you want. How can I make Diogenes happy? And Diogenes looks up and he says, get out of my son. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I want to be that point. I don't know if I'll ever get there, but I want to be at that point in my life when somebody like Alexander comes up to me and my answer isn't oh wait how can he help me my answer is get out of my son <laughs> so uh alexander says he's pretty impressed by this because he recognizes in diogenes this is a satisfied man nobody he doesn't owns care him. Yeah, yes. he doesn't want he, he doesn't want for anything because, yeah, no you know. one has any power over him i mean yeah you can kill him you can hurt him physically but you have no power over him you're not going to alter his trajectory at all he will have no. no power. He is he is the most powerful man on the face of the planet. Ultimate yeah. anarchist. Yeah, and we, he's he's definitely an anarchist because he's. I uh, mean, does ahead. he even care? Would he even care if he dies? No, no, absolutely no. not. No, no. He has he no is, fear. He has no fear, and uh, so so. Uh, I think I think he would he would actually laugh at the people that say taxation is theft. 
Oh, he would be like, "That's what? What is theft?" He wouldn't even care about that. <laughs> He'd be like, "What? What, what here? Are you, you know?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. Right. He would. He wouldn't be saying taxation is theft. He, and he may choose to pay a tax, or he may choose not to pay a tax. Ain't no one ever mind to him. Whatever works. He's not an endorser of of any of the social structures. He's not an endorser right. of any of the political structures. And he's the guy that it's a le- it's credited to him. Maybe not definitively, but one of the claims is he's the one that coined the phrase cosmopolitan. And he said, I'm a world citizen. Now, that has meaning today that it didn't have then. At the time, it really was Globalist. Yeah, yeah. To (laughs) to say you're a world citizen now is kind of like to endorse world government. He wasn't saying that. When he said he was a world citizen, what he meant is, I'm not a citizen of anything. I'm a citizen of everything, which is a citizen of nothing. I'm a citizen of Earth. Right. Yes, yes. That's what he was saying is like, I don't really care about your your trappings. I don't care about your social constructs. Although he wouldn't say that phrase, but he would be totally at home with the whole notion of of social constructs. So uh, Alexander says to him, um, oh, wait, where are we at? Okay, so Alexander has already (laughs) said to him... uh, Oh, oh, he says the something already happened. Yes. If I Get wasn't Alexander, I would want to be Diogenes. And Diogenes responds, if I wasn't Diogenes, I'd want to be Diogenes. <laughs> 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 and so I'm going to I'm going to end the Diogenes biography and then we'll talk about what we think of Diogenes. With this, there's more I could go over, but I, I, I want to also get to Epictetus here. And that is uh, Alexander, the, uh, uh, Diogenes invites Alexander to join him. Diogenes is like, listen, man, everything you need is here. The sun is up, the, 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 the heat of the stones, the, the, the smell of the grass, the beauty of the flowers, all this stuff, man, it's all right here. Everything you need. You don't need anything else. Just just hang out with me. This is, this is all you need. And Alexander's like, no, 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 no. He's like, well, well, what do you, Diogenes, well, what do you plan on doing with your life, dude? You know, what, 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 what makes you happy? And Alexander says, well, you know, I want to go out and uh, I want to I wanna beat the Persians. And then Diogenes says, well, well then what are you going to do after you beat the Persians? Well, then I'm, <laughs> I want to I wanna conquer India. Okay, well, great. After you conquer India, then what do you want to do? Well, then I want to have this empire. And I want to have kids, and I want to raise the kids, and I want to be able to, to leave my empire to the kids, and I want to see them govern over parts of my empire. And he says, oh, great. Well, then what are you going to do after that? He says, well, then I'm going to settle down, and I'm going to settle down by, by, uh, you know, by a nice river, and I'm going to enjoy the river, and I'm going to enjoy the sun. And the right. agent, he says, well, why don't you just skip all that stuff in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> just start enjoying the river and the sun right now. Yeah, just start enjoying the river and the sun right what the now. What the hell are you waiting for? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm opening it up, and I'm, uh, what, what do you guys have to say after that long? Uh, I think he's he's pretty much the, the bodhisattva that indulged. Explain that, especially to well, me because I don't know what that means. Y- you know how the Buddha, he started out as like a prince or whatever? And then he went out in the world and saw all the suffering and stuff. And then he sought to help people. And he went in, into his own like meditation, starving himself and going through all of this. Allegedly. And he, he, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Well, just like Diogenes, allegedly. I yeah, know. Right. Allegedly. I know. I, I just but, realized, yes. No, that's the story. That's the right story as far as I know it, yes. Basically, he's the uh, Diogenes is the inverse of that because instead of trying to limit himself or whatever, he completely indulged in whatever the hell he wanted to. Yeah. but Because he wasn't attached. He wasn't attached. But what he indulged in was not what we would call luxury. He wasn't indulging after sweets. He wasn't right. indulging after wealth. As a matter of fact, I think he said of gold that gold is a, a pale color because it's afraid, because it knows all of man is, is gunning for it. Uh, so... Uh, he, uh, yeah, he, he indulged he, he, in, in himself, not an Epicurean way, <laughs> no, but he indulged in his pursuit of his own understanding at all right. cost. And, and, and that's, that's what, what he saw. He sought self-awareness and understanding and, right. and resolution for the life that he had. Right. Whereas the Buddha saw self-awareness as a thing to kind of, ex- it, it, it's a, it's a little different. So Bo, Bo, he, he, he went, I, well, 
I'm I'm speculating here because I don't know Buddhism really well, but my understanding, as limited as it is, uh, he went down the path towards the, the, I guess you could say the opposite, which is not self-awareness, but a path towards unawareness, towards becoming unaware, to become uh, unaware of the distinction between well, where you begin and, and creation ends. Yeah, and he was just kind of, I think he was more or less embracing embracing that awareness rather than trying to detach from it oh yeah yeah diogenes was actually he was embracing it like that's his happiness right i I know that's his his happiness is his self-awareness but what i love about diogenes and where i think anarchists can learn a lot from diogenes i don't i'm not necessarily suggesting that we all pick up our tubs and follow him into the marketplace but one one thing you may want to try it for a little while just to see what it's like (laughs) I was homeless for a month. Um, it was yeah, not fun. I, I'm, pro- I'm probably going to be homeless. You soon may be. Too, so. Yeah, yeah. So. You're, 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 you may have your turn at it. And if you do, as much as you can, vlog. <laughs> Let's I'm, get some I'm, material I'm get, out of it. I'm going to get the best. I'm going to get the best tub I can for sound conditioning purposes. Yes. And we'll take oh, it from yes. there. <laughs> yes. I, I, and, and if Michael Fien hasn't created an entry on Creamy Auto Audio Radio for how to sound condition your tub when you're homeless. I think he needs to <laughs> get on that on That would be amazing. That would be totally awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, he 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 railed against Plato, uh, the philosopher who uh, you know sitting in his ivory tower with his theory, and he railed against the folks who who sat around. Does this sound familiar to anybody? The people who sat around bickering like what will work or what will not work and picking it to death. Does that sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Does it sound like anything that anybody's experienced in the anarchist community? <sighs> Sounds like everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So so this guy's like, I'm going to take my thoughts and I'm going to do them. I'm going to live them. And I'm going to teach. And he he was motivated to teach, to, to impart his knowledge to others. But he, he, he taught through action, through demonstration, more than lectures. So he just yeah. went out there and he he did it. He he was he he really wanted when he reacted to people the way that he reacted to them. Uh, he was looking for people to respond favorably to say, "Okay, I get it. Show me more." Yeah. And, and he didn't find them. He didn't. He, he he did have a following, but yeah, he he didn't. Largely, he didn't find them. People didn't get it. People I I didn't. think he was well aware that that was going to happen. That what was going to happen? That no one that was going to be the result. Yeah, no one's going to get it. And but you know, and this is where the Stoics and the Cynics they kind of blend, and it makes sense that they're that really it's it's to me, and, and I'm not saying I understand this perfectly, but to me the difference between the Cynics and the Stoics are the Stoics are a slightly politer version of Cynics, <laughs> but but they both have this idea, which is it's not the end goal that you're going after. So his end right. goal isn't let me go find people that will respond to what I'm doing and I can reach more people. His his end goal was I know that the path to find people is this. I'm not saying I'm going to find people because they might not exist, but I'm going to go ahead right. and it's the process. It's the dedication to the to the parts that you can control. It's the journey. And when you have a deterministic outlook, and, and I don't. I'm not a determinist. I'm not a free willer. I don't know what I am. I kind of lean free will, but though. But uh, I'm, I am uncertain, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but when you have a deterministic worldview, you really, you don't really believe there's a lot that you control. There's not a lot that's on your plate for you to decide. This is how life is going to go. But there are this these small. Uh, if you believe that you only have these small windows of control. It makes you hyper aware of those small windows and you you work diligently to prepare yourself to be able to have as much control in those small windows. Because, you know, you're not going to have many opportunities to actually yeah. affect an outcome. And again, you're looking for the opportunity to affect the outcome. You're not worried about whether you actually affect the outcome. Does that make sense? Did I just say gobbledygook? No. Just fall down a what? flight of stairs. <clears throat> Hashtag why not both? Yeah, um. <laughs> well, that's that's true. That's 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 absolutely true. But when I when I found this Diogenes, and actually, like you, Jeremy, I knew about him 
cursorially, and then I found that video, and then I shared it with you. But that video was like totally blew me. Away. I was like, oh, I love this guy. And I was like, okay, so none of this might be true. This might all be made up. But, okay, I love this. Whether he's a, a character, a fiction character that's a great <laughs> parable or what, I don't care. I love this guy. I yeah. love this story. There's so yeah. much meaning in this story. I think that's why it, it sticks with us. And, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, Rick is a Diogenes-type character from Rick and Morty. And every, I don't know. Still, I've yet to watch that show. Yeah, oh, you're, you're not missing anything. Okay. Well, for those of you that are Rick and Morty fans, you would understand when I say he's a Diogenes type character and he but but he's not so concerned about teaching anyone anything. But but he is kind of he just does what he wants, he takes what he wants, he just goes out and gets it done. And like Pickle Rick is so well loved by Rick and Morty fans. It's like, I'm Pickle Rick and like T shirts are selling and that's probably I would say might be the most popular uh, episode and the reason it's simple rick is turned into a pickle and he's totally helpless like he's totally vulnerable and most of us if we're a pickle we're going to make ourselves victims we are dude i got turned into a pickle i mean you can't expect me to do anything about this i'm toast i got turned into a pickle and i'm i'm now being flushed down the street this is what happens i'm flushed down the street a big old rainstorm thingy. I'm going to drown. And Rick, he figures out a way to, to kind of, he falls down a drain. And he does what he does. And he ends up being, uh, he, 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 he gets a rat and he plugs into no, the rat's he, brain. He, he, and, uses, he uses his tongue to bash in a cockroach's skull and controls the nervous system to get himself to move. And he works move. his way up the food uh, line, so to speak, yeah. until he's like this, he's like this, this uh, kick butt prick pickle that's totally destroying uh, these invincible people and and why they love that show so much is this is a guy that I mean obviously it's not a true story but it's like it's it's like oh, way to ruin way to ruin it Paul right I know sorry <laughs> spoiler alert sorry. also Santa <laughs> Santa died last year so uh, just just to let you guys know any more Santa stories it's a fiction at this point uh, ask what me happened? how I know fake news uh, wait. Then, then Lozilla didn't die. The no, Lozilla didn't die. No, no, there was a showdown. Right. It didn't go the way that Santa planned. I'll just say that. Oh. Yeah. We got so, we got to do a whole animated. Adventure. We're gonna have to do a story because uh, Scooby Doo's involved in that. But that's, I don't want to go down that path <laughs> right now. So, so Diogenes is the same type of. He's like a pickle, except he made he he intentionally made himself a pickle, and he still kicked butt, and and. People are talking about him to this day. And people, I mean, Diogenes' thought has influenced a lot of other thinkers, like even Nietzsche. Nietzsche, Nietzsche, big, big Diogenes fan. Uh, so so his thoughts have, have reached 2,000-plus years later. Dude made himself a pickle and still pretty much crushed. I mean, that's an inspirational story, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay, good. Good. Uh, are we ready to move to Epictetus? Um, yeah, if we can do it in six minutes. I guess so. Six minutes? Yeah, I don't think we can uh... do Epictetus in six minutes, kids. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be rough. Okay. It's going to be rough. Okay, I'm going to make an invitation here, Jeremy. You don't have to accept it. I think that we should have Jeremy back next Tuesday, if you can. Yeah. And we should do Epictetus next week. Uh, yeah, I, I, as of right now, I think I can do that, so... Well, yeah, pencil cause, me in. Because <laughs> I don't want to try to do Epictetus in, in six minutes. Now we have five, so. Yeah, now, we really have five. <laughs> now we have five minutes. And I know why we only have five minutes. So, uh, uh, anyway. Because we, we talk way too much and that that, that, that intro went way too long. <laughs> that intro is going to be like that at, next week as well. I love that intro. I don't know about you, um, Bodie, but I, I'm, I'm digging that intro. Maybe it'll be a little more streamlined. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll have a sentence prepared next week. That'll yeah, be, I might actually cool do a little more. I'll do a little more research, and we'll be able to tackle the second half of this. This is a good two-parter, though. I think it is a good two-parter, and and I maybe I think Diogenes kind of deserved to. Uh, we we got a couple more minutes here. I wanna if there's anything else that I can cover here about him. I think well, I mean I, I did. 
while you're looking, I mean, I just wanted to say, I mean, obviously, as as you said before, you know, I don't know if I'm quite ready to go live in the live in a tub in the market. Um, but I, I the, the thing I appreciate him about him the most, obviously, is the whole again, whether he, whether whether he actually existed or not. And actually, I mean, whether he actually did these things or not, you know, whether it's just a parable, uh, the fact that he act, the, the whole action thing. Yeah. And, and yes, and and crapping on Plato too, obviously for uh, selfish reasons. I like that as well. But for just that whole idea of you know, because I think a lot of people, whether they realized it or not, were you know were influenced. Because I could I could see a lot of Sterner and egoism coming out of this, right? Um, yeah. As well, yeah. so you know, uh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I see the influences everywhere, and it makes sense to me. So I and I'm all about I'm all about action these days. So I dig it, man. Yeah, I'm more and more. I mean, not that I'm I'm not against theory. I'm not against people that want to do theory. I'm only no, talking about my pre I preferences. Yeah, and it's fantastic. I, I dip into theory, too, but I'm much more. If I can't apply it, I'm not so much interested in it. Like, uh, I know I have I have a theory of power, which I'm not going to get into now, but uh, I have a theory of power that, that is useful to me because I've, I've been applying it. I apply it. I do iState.tv, and my theory of power is how I, I address the news. I use – go ahead. Yeah. I have a question about your theory of power. Have you yet applied the formula I gave you? I don't even understand it, and I don't think that it's related. You're talking about physics, and I can't quite make the connection. And maybe we can have a conversation about that on one of our shows. We should, Flush because it it, that's how I've come to understand your point of view about it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. I got one, an one more anecdote about <laughs> Diogenes, and then we'll wrap this up. Uh when Philip of Macedon was threatening Corinth, this is when he lived in Corinth, obviously, and this is before he he met Alexander, because Philip was still alive. He was dead when he met Alexander. Uh, uh, all the people in Corinth were running around. They were doing all this preparation work. And Diogenes, he, he takes his tub, and he, he rolls his up and down the streets of uh, Corinth. And he's just going back and forth, back and forth. And dude's like, dude, what 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 are you doing? He's like, well, you know, I don't want to appear like I am an idler because all these people are, you know, running around madly and they're preparing their their for for Philip and yeah, you know, I just don't want to appear like I'm an idler. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I oh, his his direct quote here is, I do not want to be thought the only idler in such a busy multitude. I don't think he really meant that. I am rolling my tub to be like the rest. That's the point he was making. All of you people running around, you're doing. You're you're just pushing your tub back and forth. You're not really doing anything. You're not was, accomplishing anything. <laughs> yeah, they were they were all they were all having their Sisyphus moment, and he was just pointing it out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sisyphus moment is exactly right. And you know, there's there's implications there. Like you know, they're 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 scrambling to avoid being taken over by a tyrant while they're being ruled by tyrants, and why the next person is going to be a tyrant. So you're just pushing frickin' dirt around. But that, if you're a state of state face and you're listening to the show, I hope you got that message. Because every time you vote, that's what you're doing. You're pushing your tub back and forth in the street to, to no avail. So on that note, I think we'll uh, wrap it up here. Jeremy, I'm very happy that you're on. Uh, you were our – no, no, you weren't our first guest. Oh, no, no, next week. You can't do it yeah, next week. A... You can't do it next week. We're going to have to I do can't. it the following week. Because okay. next week – remember who we have on next week? Oh, uh, Mr. Direct Democracy. Yeah. We have Donnie. on Donnie, Donnie. Yes, Donnie Gebert, and he's going to be talking about his Direct Republic. Uh, yep. And so then we'll do the Direct oh, Republic, Republic next week, and then the week after that is Epictetus. That's the schedule. That's what yes. we hope will happen. Sounds and, like uh, a plan. And we're going uh, to gonna have Johnny join in the old uh, absurd sentences. Okay. And with that note, thank you everybody for joining us. Sorry I didn't read the comments. I was focused on my notes. Thank you and... everybody. <laughs> thank yes. you everybody who joined, especially for the people who commented. Uh, see me tomorrow on my on my Facebook page for uh, headlines you may have missed at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tomorrow night, I don't know what we're doing, but we are doing Newsfire uh, on this channel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with uh, the One True News. Good night, everybody. Good night. Peace, y'all.